Hey guys, welcome back to Freedom Homestead. I'm Tangi and it's Wellness Wednesday, week six. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. Today's probably gonna be a long one because not only am I covering week six, but I also need to back up to week five and my goodness, so much has changed since my last Wellness Wednesday video. So let's back up to week four and then we'll take it from there. Hope you have dishes to wash or laundry to fold or something warm to drink because I have a lot of talking to do and I wrote down my notes so hopefully I can stick with them and this won't be me just going all over the place. So let's start back to Wellness Wednesday week four when I was doing a live stream with Jesso Trish. Uh, we were talking about why after doing other diets that we went back to Weight Watchers how we modified it to fit our needs and things like that. Um, but during that live stream, there was a lot of talk about intermediate fast. I keep saying that wrong. There was a lot of talk about intermittent fasting, something that I knew about but had never really implemented. Well, during that live stream, Trish talked about a channel called Six Miles to Supper and talked about how she had lost so much weight just doing the intermittent fasting. And I decided after the stream to check it out. So I watched the videos and was really, really interested. I really enjoyed the channel. I really enjoyed her videos and I wanted to learn more about intermittent fasting. So I was doing more research and a lot of you know um, that the keto community is very, um, they really encourage intermittent fasting. In that search and that research, I came across uh, Dr. Ken Berry, which I had listened to Dr. Berry before, but I'd never really listened to him talk about intermittent fasting. Also Dr. Eric Berg. Um, Dr. Berg and Dr. Berry both uh, encourage the keto lifestyle. I'm listening to intermittent fasting and I'm reading all these articles and I'm listening to these two doctors talk about it. And there were some things that both of them said that got me to asking myself some questions. Well, also during that time, uh, a very dear friend of ours, hey Justin, um, he, his birthday is one month and one day before mine and we were born the same year. So he turns 39, which is how old I'm gonna be later this month. And, um, and I asked him, I said, so do you have any big plans? Uh, you know, this is your last year in your 30s. Do you have any big plans? And of course, he's just a very sweet laid back guy. And he was like, eh, no, you know, and then, then it hit me, then it hit me. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna be 39. I'm gonna be 40 next year. And don't get me wrong, I'm excited about getting older. I believe that is a blessing, okay? I, it's much better than the alternative, right? Um, so I'm not worried about getting older, but I am worried about getting older and being in the state that I'm in. I'm not healthy enough to begin my 40s. That was kind of the thought that kept coming to me. I really, really had to get honest with myself. I had to ask myself, what does healthy mean to me? Um, what am I doing? What am I doing with Weight Watchers and, and all of these other things? Um, because it seemed to me at the time that by losing weight, I would get healthy. Then I had to ask myself, okay, so if all this time I've been fooling myself thinking that I wanna get healthy when really I just wanted to get smaller then what, what do I need to do? What's causing this? What is causing um, the pain in my hips and the pain in my back and the tiredness, the fatigue, the, the mental fog, uh, all of these things. Even though I'm healthy in the way that I don't have to take prescription medications, I do have some things going on and I need to be honest about those things. I need to not shrug it off as, oh, it's just me getting older. There are older people, people much, much older than me that are much more agile than I am. So, so let's get real. What's going on? So I start doing more research and then to get it all in a nutshell, I realized that my problem is sugar. My problem is that I am addicted to sugar and I don't mean that in a ha ha, I'm just addicted to sugar, girl, I gotta have my sugar every day. No, this is serious because when you look at America, I mean, I can only go by America because it's where I live. Um, people are dying 
for reasons that they have no, they shouldn't be dying from. And it's because of our diet. It's because we consume so much sugar. There is sugar in everything that we eat. And then things that should be good for us, like uh, wheat and rice and um, all of those other things, it's not the same it's not the same food that God originally created for us. So our bodies don't know what to do with all of it. And so I decided that my problem is sugar. And the reason that I chose Weight Watchers was because I can lose weight and still have sugar. But I can still be a skinny diabetic. I can still be small and have heart disease. I can still be small and have cancer. And I don't want any of those things. Um, I would rather be healthy. I would rather be thick and be healthy than be small and be unhealthy. Um, so I decided to stop doing Weight Watchers and start living a keto, keto-ish lifestyle. Not so much concerned about being in ketosis, which um, I don't do the tests, I don't do any of that stuff. I'm just letting the results speak for themselves. But my main concern is that I am no longer addicted to sugar and that my body can function the way it's supposed to and that I will not be susceptible to type two diabetes and high blood pressure and heart disease and all these things that run in my family. So I have been doing keto since last Monday. And how I began was I started simply by downloading the Carb Manager app. And since I had already gone to the grocery store a few days prior to deciding to do keto, um, I decided that I'm gonna have to make what I already have work. So that's what I've been doing, is I've been just eating at home things that are moderate protein, high in good healthy fats, and low in carbs. And what I really like about the Carb Manager, one, is that it's free. Um, two, that it, it helps you stay with your macros. And the reason why I decided to track it is because the last time I did keto, I did not track it. And I really feel like I probably would have done better if I had kept my calories in check and I also knew how much fiber I was consuming. Because remember, I had severe constipation during that last time that I did it. I was consuming a lot of cheese, a lot of dairy. Um, and so, you know, that's something that I know that I need to watch. Um, so, downloaded the Carb Manager app, decided to make what we already had work. <clears throat> so that was Monday. Tuesday, I stayed on plan, um, was already kind of starting to feel uh, a little bit, not keto flu, but just, you know, urinating a lot, um, a lot of, uh, losing a lot of fluid. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we had a church function that we volunteered for. And um, my job, uh, I was working in the kitchen, and my job was to man the dessert table. Now remember, I am a sugar, sugar addict and starting this lifestyle. And I knew that if I gave myself permission to cheat within my first few days, that I would be done for. You know, you're gonna have to live in a world where sugar exists. So it's time to put your big girl pants on and just suck it up. Uh, arm yourself with keto-friendly foods. Make sure I get plenty of fats. You can do this. And let me tell you, I did it three days. I des I manned a dessert table. I cut the pies, I cut the cakes, I set out the cookies, um, hundreds every day, hundreds of slices of cakes and pies. And I did not even lick my fingers, y'all. I did not, I completely abstained. I felt so good and I, and I really feel like I did right by um, arming myself. So um, I had been uh, dabbling in intermittent fasting. I'd intermittent fasted uh, Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday, I decided I'm gonna go ahead and have a good breakfast so I'm not tempted by the things that I shouldn't eat. I was satiated, I was completely satisfied and I did not feel at all like I needed to have a piece of cake or anything. So I was good and I did great. I was very, very happy. 
of how well I did. Wednesday night at church, um, we had another dinner and the church cooked, what is it? Chicken fried steak. It was chicken fried steak, mashed potatoes, gravy, biscuits, stewed cabbage, deviled eggs, layered salad, and then desserts, right? So I'm looking at the table and I'm thinking, okay, I know I can, I can do the cabbage, I can do deviled eggs, and then the layered salad most likely has, or has peas on it. Um, so I thought I can take, I can flick the peas off, no big deal. But then I remembered, okay, this is the South we're talking about. So I asked one of the kitchen ladies, is there any sugar in the deviled eggs? Because we do traditionally sweeten our deviled eggs down here. And she said, oh honey, there's sugar in all this. And I went, even the cabbage? She said, yeah, a little bit. I was like, oh, okay. So there was sugar in the homemade dressing on the salad. There was sugar in the deviled eggs. There was sugar in the cabbage. Um, and then of course the gravy biscuits and the um, chicken fried steak were, you know, that's all grains. So I thought, you know what? This is also going to happen in life. And I just need to do the best with what I've got. So, so I had uh, two deviled eggs and I had a bunch of layered salad and that's what I had. Um, I did not eat any of the dessert. I didn't have any of the gravy, the biscuits, the mashed potatoes or the chicken fried steak or any of the desserts. Um, so, you know, that was, that was good. I also should mention uh, Wednesday night that I was starting to feel really dizzy dizzy and that um, I felt like my eyes couldn't focus very well um, and I felt really really tired so all of that is part of my body adjusting to my new lifestyle so since I did so well on Wednesday I decided that I probably didn't need to have breakfast on Thursday and Friday so I did intermittent fasting Thursday and Friday and it worked out great I still wasn't craving any of the sweets or I wasn't tempted to eat any of the sweets. Saturday and Sunday, I did not fast and I just ate keto healthy all day. On or I just ate keto both of those days. Saturday night, we had friends over and usually that is when I overindulge is I'm a social indulger. When we have friends over, there's always dessert and food and I usually uh, eat more than I should. Um, but, uh, so how it worked out was our friends that came, actually Justin, the one that I told you that had the birthday, it was him and his wife and their kids and they came over and she brought dinner and then I supplied dessert. I know, crazy, right? Um, so she did tacos. So we had taco meat, shells, um, cheese, shredded lettuce, tomatoes, um, guacamole, diced avocado, and um, the slaw, the cabbage with the lime juice and the salt. So how I fixed my plate was I did a big pile of the cabbage, okay? And then I put a bunch of the taco meat on top and then I topped it like I would a taco. I did the onions, shredded cheese, guacamole, everything. So that was delicious. And I, d I did dessert, okay? So um, I baked some brownies and I bought some ice cream and uh, uh, chocolate syrup and whipped cream and there was sprinkles and marciano cherries and you know just did like a big ice cream sundae bar and but for myself uh, I saw a recipe on Keto Connect where she made mason jar ice cream and it was so, so simple. So you melt butter in a skillet and then you kind of toast your pecans in the brown butter. And, um, and then in a mason jar, you put heavy whipping cream, your stevia and, <clears throat> and a little bit of vanilla extract. And then you put your nuts in it and then you shake the jar uh, for about five minutes. Just shake it really, really hard. And then once it you know, doubles in volume to the point where you don't hear anything shaking anymore, you put it in the freezer and you freeze it for three hours and it's butter pecan ice cream is what it is. So they had ice cream and I had ice cream. It was just keto ice cream and it was delicious. Absolutely love it. That was week five. For week six, uh, Monday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, again, staying on plan. Um, I am intermittent fasting Monday through Friday and then not fasting Saturday and Sunday. Um, and that's really working well for me. I have bulletproof coffee in the morning and then I eat 
at about 11 o'clock. Uh, I have a big lunch and then I have a big dinner at uh, before seven. Seven is my cutoff time. Something else, I just came in the kitchen and forgot to mention another change that I've made is when I do my second fermentation for my kombucha. Uh, for myself, I've stopped putting the juice in it and just having the original flavor. And it's actually really good. So that's another change I've made. Another thing that I've been doing, I decided to start going for walks. We have a fantastic place to walk. Walking from the top of my driveway all the way down to the farm, back up, back down, and back is, um, is a mile and a half. So what I've been doing, and it takes me 30 minutes, and what I've been doing, I got this armband at Dollar Tree to put your phone in. So um, I load up some podcasts on my phone, and I put it in my little armband, and I, and I walk. And it's really, really been enjoyable. And I decided that I'm not going, I'm not trying to race anybody. I don't want to be the fastest walker. Um, I just need to move. So that's what I'm concentrating on right now is I just need to move. And then when that gets boring or too easy, I'm going to start challenging myself. Um, maybe walking, you know, for an hour or maybe I'll ch challenge myself to run from one fence post to another. I mean, I don't know. Um, I, like I said, I'm not out to prove anything at this point. I'm just concentrating on getting in some movement. So that's been really enjoyable. And so this is great. Yeah. So this is definitely worth the one dollar. My good friend Shakima from One Mom, Two Boys, Two Girls, Eight and All. Um, she has been living the keto lifestyle for almost a year, I think. She's going to be giving her keto update very soon and it's amazing some of the things that she's had going on because her body is healing. So you have to check her out. Uh, I'm going to throw an iCard in the corner to her channel as well as in the description box below. She is, I consider her to be one of my dear uh, YouTube friends and I just love her so much. If you like um, living on a budget, uh, Dave Ramsey stuff, uh, clean with me's, homeschooling, um, recipes, keto, or just being in the presence of someone with such a warm spirit, then you need to check out her channel and you need to subscribe and love on her because she is so awesome. Um, but anyway, I told her, hey, you know, I've decided that I'm ready to get healthy and I'm cutting out sugar and decided to uh, start living keto. And um, she said, this, like, this is what she said. She said, okay, girl, give me your address. I'm sending you a cookbook and you're not gonna argue with me about it. And I was like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> so she sent me this uh, cookbook called Southern Keto and I'm gonna throw an affiliate link to this cookbook down in the description box below. She said for her, it's been a total game changer because we both love homestyle Southern cooking. And that's what this whole cookbook is. It's Southern foods that we grew up with that are made carb, uh, that are low carb. Everything in here, I was like, yes. Yes, like every, I was so excited about everything in this cookbook and I do plan to cook through this whole cookbook, just so you know. That was a lot. Uh, so how has switching to keto affected the scale? Well, last Wellness Wednesday, I had gotten down to 204. Okay, so I started at 207. Four weeks later, I'm down to 204. Last week, um, I weighed on my usual date and I had lost two pounds. My first week of keto, I lost two pounds, getting me down to 202. This morning, I weigh 200 even. So um, in the last two weeks, I have lost four pounds on keto, but that's not all. Let me tell you a little bit about other changes that I have noticed. One, my energy is totally back. Another thing is that the pain in my hips is almost gone. Um, that just all that inflammation that I have lost, um, incredibly, my hips don't hurt as much, like almost not at all. And same with my back. Uh, usually when I get up in the morning, I walk like an 80 year old woman. Um, just very stiff. Uh, usually I limp with my hips first thing in the morning until they get good and warmed up. Um, but that's not been the case um, for the past week. 
uh, and then my back, I normally have to kind of stretch it out when I first get up. I've not had to do that either. Um, so I've lost a lot of inflammation. I can really tell it in my gut and I can really tell it in my face. I don't know if you guys can see, you can, I have actually have a jawline, uh, not much left of my double chin. So um, already tons of, of excellent uh, progress in such a short amount of time. And so let's talk about what I'm gonna be doing going forward. So going forward, I'm going to stay the course. Um, one thing that I do, and I've been saying this forever, I want to do meal prepping, which I did kind of do last week. I, I roasted the big chicken um, Monday, this Monday uh, for lunch. Again, looking through, see what we already had that was keto friendly. I found a Trim Healthy Mama S meal um, recipe for tuna cakes. Uh, it's very low carb, and so I made the I made a whole bunch of tuna cakes. Um, I also made some chicken fried collie rice, and um, so I had that for a few meals. So I'm already kind of doing it. Um, I just don't have like the little trays, and and those may be, you know, unnecessary. Uh, maybe just having a bunch of food in the refrigerator that I can dish out and then heat up. I don't know. I don't know, I'll figure it out. So I wanna concentrate on making sure that I have plenty of foods available so I don't get tempted to, you know, pop a chip in my mouth or something like that. So that is it on all of that. There are two things that I wanna mention really quick and if you stay to the end, then you give yourself a pat on the back. You are a, <laughs> you're amazing. Um, but two things that I have coming up, I mentioned Shakima at One Mom, Two Girls, uh, Two Boys, Eight and All. Uh, she and I are actually going to be doing a really fun collab. Um, I can't remember the timeline on it. I know she's got a lot going on right now, but in the near future, she and I are going to be kind of doing a keto version of Chopped. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing is we are going to have um, uh, some ingredients that is going to be predetermined by someone else and uh, she's gonna have to cook some meals with those ingredients and so will I. So that's gonna be really, really fun. So stay tuned for that. And then um, I'm going to be on Southern Mama's Coffee Break this Thursday morning. Uh, Cherish asked me to come on and she and I, we, we kinda know what we're gonna talk about but we also know that usually when you let the conversation take on its own life, it's a lot more entertaining than than what you previously had planned. But anyway, so be watching for those and I have a lot to edit and get this up today for you guys. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this Wellness Wednesday and I'm very excited about next week and I don't even know what's gonna happen next week. So until next time.